Today we will learn about abelian groups. And there is a very powerful structure theorem related to abelian groups. And I'll start with an example so that we completely understand this. Suppose G is an abelian group and it has 15 elements. So we just know the number of elements of this group. What can we say about G? Can we understand G completely just by knowing the number of elements of G? Now, here is a word of caution. This is very important. There can be more than one group, more than one group may have same number of elements. In the comment section, can you give me an example of a group which has four elements? So make a comment and tell me if you can find two groups G1 and G2 each containing four elements but the two groups are not the same. So the point is this that just knowing the number of elements of a group might not be sufficient to understand the structure of the group or might not be un enough to identify everything about the group. We may need more information for about the group to understand it. But sometimes, sometimes, let me write that, sometimes it is enough to know the number of elements of a group. Just by knowing that, we can completely understand the group. I'll give you an example. We started with this 15 uh, element example. And that is a very good example for this in this context. So we have this um, group G with 15 elements and we also have one more information that G is abelian. That means if A and B are two elements of the group, then A star B is equal to B star A. The binary operation is commutative. Okay. Now, the question is this. What can we say about G? Here comes the structure theorem, the structure theorem, which is sometimes known as the fundamental, the fundamental theorem of abelian groups, the fundamental theorem of abelian groups. And what does it say? Well, it says that G is equal to the direct sum of ZQ1, ZQ2, ZQ3, etc. Where Q1, Q2, Q3, let me just check, move, move these things. Where Q1, Q2, Q3, these are powers of primes. Powers of primes. Now you might be wondering that what does ZQ1 mean? I'll give use this example to explain. First factorize 15 is 3 times 5. So G using this structure theorem we can say G is equal to Z3 plus z5. Notice that nothing else is possible because we want q1 
to be a power of a prime q2 to be a, another power of a prime and the product should be this the number of elements so maybe i should mention that that q1 star q times q2 etc this should be the power of the or the order of the group g okay now this means that the product of these numbers down here should be equal to 15 and it, there is only one way to do this because 3 times 15 is the only way where q1 and q2 are powers of primes and the product is 15 there is another factorization of 15 possible which is 15 times 1 but notice that we cannot write this as z, z15 times z1 whatever this means z1 means because 15 is not a power of a prime it has to be a power of a prime okay so this this much is resolved now the question really is this then that what can we say about z15 and what does z3 and z5 mean well z3 means it's a spe special group containing three elements and the operation is addition modulo 3 and z5 has five elements uh, 3 4 and the operation is addition modulo 5 and what is the meaning of this plus sign with a round here it's sometimes known as the direct sum so how do you do it well you can simply compute it first take the Cartesian product of these two sets so take the Cartesian product so you have the set 0 so I'm taking the product of these two sets so I'll do one thing I'll take 0 1 2 that's the first set first element 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 the so first uh, first element of that Cartesian product I'll just write the second element in different color so 1 2 okay maybe 0 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 this is the set and the second element is coming from this uh, second z5 this particular group okay now how would you so this is the set z so this set is z3 direct sum z5 now how would you compute how you do combine elements in this set so i'll again use an example it's very simple suppose you want to combine 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 how would you do that 1 comma 2 star 2 comma 3 you need a binary operation in this set in this particular set to make it into a group a well-defined binary operation so how, how would you do it so maybe I can just change it here and write it here so 1 comma 2 star 2 comma 3 you can combine 1 and 2 they are elements of z3 so 1 plus 2 mod 3 the first two elements and the second two elements is 2 plus 3 mod 5 so use the these are elements of z5 so use that operation so this is 3 mod 3 is 0 5 mod 5 is 0 so we have 0 comma 0 so this star operation of 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 gives you 0 comma 0 so you understand what is the direct sum now very nice 
So we have this um, group Z4, Z3 plus Z5 and this is given to be equal to G. Now you might wonder what makes it certain that G is exactly this particular group with this operation. I mean maybe I can just uh, change the size a little bit. How do we know that G is exactly this group? Well, that is the magic of the structure theorem or the fundamental fundamental theorem of abel finite abelian groups. This is the magic of this theorem. It says that since it is possible to write G in only this factorization, let me use the word factorization, such that these two numbers are powers of prime. There is no other way to write 15 in this, uh, such that these two numbers are powers of prime. Hence, the only group with, f only abelian group with 15 elements must be isomorphic to this one. That is, must be group theoretically this one. This is a very powerful thing to say. Just by knowing the number of elements of G, which is 15 by the way, you know, you now know everything about this group, including the group operation and whatnot. So, uh, now let's come to a, an application problem. The fundamental theorem of abelian groups is actually not hard to prove. It's actually quite easy to prove. Uh, but you can look into the proof in the uh, in some book on abstract algebra. Let's look at look into an application here. This is a problem from TIFR 2020 10, problem two, and it basically says that there is a group G, which is abelian, which of the following. is not necessarily cyclic is not necessarily cyclic so that's the question and the order of the groups are given so 14 21 30 and 27 these are the four options given the order of the options might be a little different in the actual exam but anyway so can you try this problem link in the description has the exact answer of it and more on how to solve this but this is an application of what we just discussed so this is an application of the fundamental theorem of abelian groups so uh, give it a try put the answer in the description if you know the answer and um, if you can find it if not the link in the description will give you um, more ideas about the solution of this one keep on doing great mathematics i'll see you in the next video